Amen. Open up your mouth and give God some praise. There is such a strong prophetic anointing in this place. Yeah. There's a whole strong prophetic anointing in this place that God is speaking and God is releasing and he is speaking to his people and he's awakening and giving you hints and signs and wonders to show you to your next, to show you how he can catapult you, to give you answers to your question that you've been questioning. And so with this strong anointing in this place, we ain't even got to lay hands or do anything. It's just intercede and pray. Take about one minute, and even if it's for yourself, for your family, for your kids, if it's for healing, if it's for whatever that is for, take about one minute and I want you to go up. We don't need no music. Go up in intercession. Go up in intercession and call down fire from heaven. Go up in intercession and let what's on the inside of you be released in this place. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. Come on, your mouth is your instrument. Open up your mouth and release the prophetic on the inside of you. Releasing this with this atmosphere. That people lives be changed. That people lives be changed. That people minds be catapulted. Open up your mouth. God, we pray that the people that are deaf, that you unstuck their ears. The ones that are blind, that God, you take the veil off their eyes. The ones that can't speak, God, you will let the dumb speak. Release the word that will shift us, that will catapult us, that causes cancer to dry up, that causes shift our mind. That shit God is calling for intercession. Calling for intercession. And open up your mouth and release it in this place. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. That shit, come on, cry out to him. Come on, cry out to him. 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 Jesus, 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 at the name of Jesus, people are here, at the name of Jesus, people are set free, at the name of Jesus, cancer have to dry up, at the name of Jesus, 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 your name is a strong tower, where the righteous run in and safe, Jesus, Jesus, a way out of no way, Jesus, 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 God Almighty, whoa, Jesus, glory, fire your name, madness, fire your name, glory, 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 oh Jesus, give you praise, we give you worship, we give you praise, we give you worship, In Jesus name. Jesus name Jesus name oh Jesus Jesus hey. glorify you glorify you you have to have that memory that if it have not been for the Lord that is on my side it's that memory I don't need no organ I don't need nobody to pump and prime me only thing I need is a memory of what could have happened but by God's grace and because of God's mercy that wasn't a plan for my life and God I give you praise hey. give you thanksgiving Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's a sound of a revival. A revival is when you have a reformation, that something started changing, that something started happening, and the Holy Spirit, that's on the inside of you, set a fire and give you a zeal. You ain't got no trust, but to open up your mouth. And God, I give you praise. God, I give you worship. Revive us, revive us, everything that's dead on the inside of us, revive us, every gift, every talent that's on the inside of us, shut
shake us up, shake us loose, so what's on the inside of us can come to the surface. Awaken, O Zion, now is the time. I have need of thee. Awaken and come forth. Woo! Glory, caught you worthy. Caught you worthy. Healing, that's it. Healing, healing. It's about four of you in here. You need physical healing. And it's about five of you that need mental healing. God say, I thank you for your healing. I thank you. You don't need nobody to lay hands on you. You be your prophet for yourself and say, Heal. By your stripes, I am here. The weapon might fall, but it won't prosper. I am here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here mentally. I'm here physically. I'm here. Everybody around me here. My kids here. My church family here. My pastor here. Hear me from the crown of my head to the shout. Healing her, healing her, healing her, healing her, healing is the children's prayer. Healing is the children's prayer. Healing is the children's prayer. By your stripes, I keep hearing it in my spirit. By your stripes, by your stripes, by your stripes. I don't know who that's for, but you take it and grab it out the atmosphere. By your stripes, we are here. By your stripes, I am here. I am here. I am here. I am here. Heal. 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 Hey. Heal. Heal. Let me get into this. Let me get into this. Heal. 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 Healed. That's for you. With the with the with the tan shirt on. That's for you. Healing. You have had situations and circumstances and stuff that has happened to you throughout the years. And it causes you to act out in certain ways. And people want to label you act out, but don't know the seed that was planted that causes you to do what you do. Because when seeds are planted, it brings forth the fruit. And from that from that tree, it brings forth tree, and from that tree you get fruit. So you don't see what happened, but you see the evidence of what I act the way I act. And so God say, I heal you of people who broke your heart. I heal you of things that happened in your childhood that you never did say anything about, but they see your reaction. God said, today you will heal from that. Yeah, let me get into this. Cause that can get carried by and I will never preach. And nope, that's not what we're going to do today. Healing. Healing. Yeah, that's about four of you. Four of you that need mental healing. No, 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 no. That's about five of you that want that need healing up here and healing, healing in your heart. But it's about four of you that need physical healing. Yeah. Four, four. Yeah, four, four, four. Get, get, get your Bibles, get your Bibles or devices or whatever you got. And let's go to Acts 2. Yeah. Acts 2. Acts 2, Acts 2, Acts 2, Acts 2, Acts 2, and it reads as follows. And when the day, the unfoldment of Pentecost was fully come. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. And I questioned when I was reading this text, why did it say fully come? It's because if you go back into the Old Testament and you read scripture and look, that everybody had an, um, had an, an enlightenment. Everybody had, had, it was inspired by the Holy Ghost, but it didn't fully come yet. You was inspired by it. You was inspired to do what you do. <laughs> but here, it fully came. Uh, oh, I felt Noel Jones then. I went to 
day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appealed upon them cloven tongues as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And when you look at that term as, they, as it sat upon each of them, it means they start to dwell and inhabit. <laughs> and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. It wasn't that the Holy Ghost wasn't around because if you look at Genesis, it tells you in one and three that, that it moved upon the water. But here, it fully came. <laughs> so, um, they was all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. I want you to understand here that the word tongues, if you look at it in the Greek, it means language. Pastor Paul, yes, I'm not a, opposed to tongues, but Pastor Paul, later on in the New Testament, he speaks about tongues. That you know, if you, you're speaking in tongues, you have people to interpret it. You don't have the three, four, five people just going off into tongues. But here, it talks about a language that changed. It talks about a language that changed through the Holy Ghost. Um, and they begin to speak in tongues and that the spirit the spirit gave them under it's not nothing that they went on YouTube and went on Facebook and learned from somebody else but they received this when they was baptized in the Holy Ghost and they called it tongues because if you look at the Greek it is tongues but it means a, a glossy what means language they language change on the unction of the Holy Ghost, I want to preach upon and under the topic anticipating of the promise. Anticipation of the promise. Anticipation. We already pray. Have your seats. Anticipation on the anticipation of the, the purpose. Anticipation of the promise. Why are you trying to change a portion? Anticipation of the promise. Um, let me see how I want to start this off. Uh, I'm going to touch my introduction, but that's going to be my hollering scream for me. I'm going to teach you, but I'm going to scream for me today. Um, when, when there is an anticipation, anticipation, there is an excitement. When there is um, an anticipation, you are waiting eagerly for something that you know is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, when there is an anticipation, we are left in a state of being anxious by suspense. Um, it means that uh, we look ahead to what is coming and believing that it's going to happen. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave that there because I can take flight right there. But I, let me get this to this. Um, I questioned myself when studying this text. I've been studying this text for a while, and I, and, I, and and God said, "Okay, I'm gonna give you the rest of it, and then you, you're gonna preach it." And so I, my question was, how did we lead up to the day of Pentecost? What happened? Because you hear people preach about the Pentecost and they shout and they hook and they buck and everybody going in the tongues and you don't can't even hear what nobody's saying because everybody is going up and caught up in the excitement of Pentecost but really don't understand why we have it. Uh, so how, how do we get to the point uh, about the day of Pentecost? That was a, a festival um, called the Passover. Yes, the Passover was the annual festival for the Israelites. It honored the freedom um, and the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt um, from when they was on the Pharaoh. And so here, their firstborn child were passed over and spared from death. And so, so it was used. It was used by Jesus to represent the freedom of the spiritual man from the dominance of sense. It, it, it was a part of the regenerative process that goes on, that the body goes under by the inspiration of the Christ mind. Yeah. 
It, it, it was the passing over as, as a sum total, passing over uh, out of one state of consciousness, consciousness uh, one state of thinking into another one. Yeah. It's a mental attitude in which we are bridging over from one state of consciousness and going to a whole new, new way of thinking and entering into a new era. Yeah, yeah. So, so in between the Passover, we have Jesus uh, been crucified, dead, buried, and resurrected, and ascended into heaven, which is uh, a prototype of what we have to do for ourselves. Uh, and so, but between, I don't want to get into that, uh, but between, uh, between the Passover and the Pentecost, uh, it was seven weeks uh, and fifty days. It was seven weeks. For just 50 days. And I, and I said, well, Lord, uh, um, um, what, what are you you're saying? Because when I first started studying this, I was just stuck on the Pentecost. I said, no, 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 no. I need you to go back and find out what happened and led up to this point. And so I went back and I started studying. And, and, it, and, it, and in my study, I found out it was 50 days between the Passover and between Pentecost. But they are attached to each other. So, so after after um, Jesus' death, um, the disciples, man, they became timid. They became fearful. They became gloomy, and they became depressed because they was hoping that God was going to be their savior and that God was going to was going to lead them free and lead them on. But the truth be told is uh, that Jesus had been assassinated. He had been assassinated that Jesus had not left them uh, and they were looking real crazy. Uh, and you had the religious people there uh, in Jerusalem that was after them. Uh, they wanted them uh, because we seen you with Jesus uh, and we know what the mission and what Jesus did. Uh, and just because you've been hanging around him, some of what you got don't rub on on you. Uh, and so they were scared uh, and they was hiding out uh, because they said, man, we can't be seen in this town. We can't be seen in this town because these were religious people they gonna get us and so what happens is is what happens is they started questioning and they got fidgety and they got scared but the thing is before Jesus left them he told them and he commanded his disciples he said I need you to stay in Jerusalem and wait on the promise of the father I know what the religious people trying to do I know they ready to take your head off because of me I know they want your neck but I mission for my daddy and I want to give you this he told me to tell you to stay in Jerusalem stay in Jerusalem until the promise come that's in Acts 1 and 4 but there in the middle of the darkest moment that they had Jesus started showing up to them and he came to them at night he came to them through his resurrection after resurrecting a week later he came he appeared he appeared to the disciples along with Thomas and both and he left a message he said don't live in fear don't live don't live in doubt but live in faith God have mercy live in faith so what he was saying I need you need you to stay to stay in this place Jerusalem was a place of peace Jerusalem was a place was a place that God dwell and his peace and hover around just like the spirit right then over the waters the spirit stayed there he didn't fully come but the spirit was hovering around and in the midst of the people and he told his disciples I need you to stay in Jerusalem. You gotta stay there. And the disciples, in my study, it said that the disciples was at the point that they were so scared and so frightening that they said, if something don't happen soon, I'm gonna return back to what I know. If something don't happen soon, I'm gonna go back to my occupation and I'm gonna pause here for a little gratification. You that is waiting on the promise of what God told you, don't live in doubt. Even when I can't see it, even when I can't trace it, even when I can't see it, even when I can't trace 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 it, even when
just waiting for that not to breathe. Y'all gonna mess up now. So he was telling his disciples, I know you're scared, but what I don't need you to do is return the back to what's familiar to you. I know things don't got tight. I know stuff is looking funny. But what I don't need you to do is turn back to what you are familiar to. And oftentimes, we turn back and we go back to what we are familiar to because we, because we get uncomfortable. We get anxious because, God, I know what you said, but I don't see it. I know what you said, but it's not like it's going to happen. But God say, I need you to stand firm on my word and my word that I am releasing. It will accomplish everything I set for it to accomplish, even if it don't look like it. I need you to keep moving forward. It's a process to the promise. It's a process to becoming. It's a process, but I don't need you to go back. Most of the time, we go back because it's comfortable. We go back because we know what's going to happen. We know how it's going to happen. We got our hand in it. And it's like, if my hand is in it, then I'll make sure that it doesn't get down. But God say, I need you to trust me. Even in your darkest moments, when you can't trust me, God told me to tell you that I ain't brought you this far to leave you. I heard the hymn writer say, nobody tell me that this way we're going to But I know what I feel like preaching, that he didn't bring me this far to leave me. I know he didn't make me and bring me out of the house house just to leave me. to do that at the end. No. So, sit down, Deacon, sir. Sit down. Because he stand up and then he start walking up. Between him, Crunch, and Mr. Head. I'm Mama back there. Y'all got this. I'm coming. So, the disciples commissioned, Jesus commissioned the disciples. He said, Stay in Jerusalem, pace of peace. He said, but I'm going to leave you. I'm going to go. But I'm going to leave you with this. You stay there. You stay in Jerusalem. Because there's a promise of the Father. But the thing is with the disciples and the thing is with us, they didn't know when the promise was going to come. They didn't know what day, they don't know what hour sound familiar, huh? We don't know what day or hour that the Son of Man is going to appear, but we just know that he's coming back. You'll catch that going home. But they just didn't know. Only thing they had was a word. And that's like some of us. We ain't got no plan. We don't know. We're praying and meditating and seeking. But if you got a word from the Lord, you got everything that you need. So in general, go Portia, go ahead. In general, 50 symbolizes uh, completing a perfection. Um, the completion of a cycle, uh, the ending of an old cycle, and the beginning of a new one. The number 50 symbolizes freedom. It symbolizes a release. And it symbolizes a new cycle is about to start. So here, um, uh, uh, let me go back. Uh, um, go back and show you a pattern in the Bible. So we see uh, a pattern in between uh, Exodus from, from, uh, um, um, from um, um, Egypt. From Egypt, uh, we had 50 days after they was given the Torah on Mount Sinai with the Passover. We were liberated and freed by the shedding of Jesus' blood 50 days after giving his spirit at the Pentecost. Yeah. Uh, 
ungodly. So what means is that we have the same God in the Old Testament that we have in the New Testament. They have nothing new under the sun. God has patterns that he operates by and he has ways of doing things. And so here, meaning that God gave Israel the Torah is a reflection of his spirit and it is the same spirit that he poured out in abundance and when God gave them the Torah, it could not be rewritten for as the prophet foretold it and he said it was written on the tablets of their heart rather than the tablets of stone. So the old covenant of law was written upon the tablets of stone and the new covenant upon grace was written in my heart. Tell me, let me give you a Bible. Second Corinthians 3 and 3, it says clearly that you are the letter from Christ. Show the results of your ministry that this letter to my you written not with pen, not with ink, but by with my spirit of the living God. And it is carved not on stones, but it's carved in the human heart. I wish I had about four people that say this way, her thing, that God is finna do. That what I am participating is not written no paper. Come on, Frank, if you're gonna pray, it's not written no stone, but this time is written on my heart. It's written on my heart. <laughs> By then, and my son, when he gave it, he gave it, and they wrote it on stone. They wrote it on tablet. But that was from the Old Testament. But this time, he's getting ready to fill me from my head to my toes. He's getting ready to fill me, and I'm going to have it written on my heart. <laughs> Not stone. I'm trying, Dick. I'm trying. Not stone, but it's written on my heart. The law back then in the Old Testament, it was given in them in stone. But in this New Testament, I ain't writing in no stone no more. I'm going to write it on you. You don't walk in the epistle that they go see. Let me go. So the spiritual assassin uh, is a number, this 50 means the number of illumination. If you look at the word a spiritual assassin, assassin is meaning there's a spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening, spiritual awakening is a process where we shed out our older self-centered patterns and pursuits that serve our ego. We let go of the things that made my flesh feel good. I let go of the things that made me feel good. And, and, and I progress towards the elevation of the consciousness awareness. And I lift up my consciousness. I've come up higher. When you see people telling you to come up higher, it's telling you you need to lift your thought process and your mind process higher. Come out from the bottom and come up higher. And so what it is with the spiritual awakening is something similar as a system update. If you have an iPhone, I'm praying that's it, Zach. That's it, Zach. When you have an iPhone, I'm sorry for your Android users, but if you have an iPhone, every now and then, you'll see something that come across your phone, and it says what? It's time to update. You got a 16.1.0 point something that's coming across your phone, and it asks you, what time do you want to update this? You want to do it too late, or you want to do it now? And it says if you're going to update, first of all, you got to have enough power so you can update. If not, you got to plug into a source. I wish I had about three people that understood what I was saying right there. You're going to have to plug in to a source. And the same thing that you got to do with that phone, you that phone, you got to update that phone again side of you and you can't sleep on it no more. You can't hit snooze on it no more. You can't say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. No, I said, no. If you don't, I'm going to keep it with you. If you don't, you're going to keep hurting. If you don't, you're still going to have anxiety. If you don't, you're still going to be depressed. If you don't, I'm still going to give you a headache. He says, a system update. And I need you to plug into the spirit and to get ready and let me update you. Let me update you to what I am doing now. You And daughters, they go prophesy, and the old men are gonna 
Team Chiefs Ambassador! I'm getting ahead of myself. God! Woo! Woo! I'm so one there. There is a special, a spiritual awakening. Keep my time, Raven. Somebody, come on, get my time. That one there is a spiritual awakening. You start feeling disconnected or disattached. When there is a spiritual awakening, your dreams become vivid. They become clear. When there is a spiritual awakening, your relationships begin to shift. Connections that you used to have, you don't have them no more because you're spiritually updating. You might have the same apps, but the apps don't look the same after you don't been updated. You might have the same people, but the people, they don't even sound the same once you've been spiritually updated. And so what happens is you want to be in service more. Don't nobody have to tell you to be in service. I am there because I don't know what's going to happen. God may make up his mind and, and send deliverance through my pastor. Send a word that shifts me and catapult me to my next. That's why it's important to be in prayer. Your pastor popped up in prayer about two, three days straight and laid hands on everybody that was in the building and start declaring and awakening people, purpose and destiny. That's why it's important that you be in tune because you don't know what's going to happen. But when you are spiritually awakened, your body start having sensations. Your body start vibrating on its own. When you are being spiritually awakened, sometimes you start having physical symptoms. Your arms start hurting. Your legs hurt, your back hurt, your elbows hurt, my, my neck hurt, my toe hurt, my fingers hurt. God say you're hurting because I'm reaching in you. You are hurting because I'm putting my DNA in you. It's just like Spider-Man. It's just like when he got bit by that spider and that spider bit him. It went all through his body. And what was in the spider became in him. And he was Spider-Man. There's a change. There's a change in your habit. There's a change in your taste. There's a change in your routine. The stuff that you used to do, you don't even have a craving to do it no more. That's when you know you change it. And then your outlook on things become different. God say just like that boy, that boy, I don't even know the man who, who was his name? That was Spider-Man. The man, anybody? Who? Toby, Peter Parker, yeah. So Peter Parker was your average man, but not Peter Parker didn't understand that before he was released out of the mind of God, through the conduit from eternity into time, placed into his mother womb and birthed out in nine months, that he was predestined to be Spider-Man, that he was predestined to change the world. And so what happened is he was on on about his day and doing his thing, and this spider got a hope to him and won't live let him go. It came down that shit and it bit him and he said ouch and he threw the spider down but what had happened the damage had already been done and what was on the inside of that spider came through Peter Parker and it started changing his DNA. Came through Peter Parker and it started changing his mindset. Came through Peter Parker and filled him completely up and so then you see a man who will normally be walking he's shanging, he's slanging from building to building. He out there saving people. He out there saving the day. And that's the same thing with you. God is saying that I'm coming to put a hold on you and change your DNA. So what's on the inside of me is going to be on the inside of you. And you're going to swing from building to building. Go on now change your lives in Jesus name. Go on now and lay your head on the blind and the blind coming to see lay your head Let me get to this text. They will not talk about me today and say I was long. I got you. I'll be done. Um, let me get to this text. And when the big day of Pentecost. 
That was long, I know. When the day of Pentecost uh, was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. Yeah. Hey! The meaning of the day of Pentecost uh, is that there was an enfoldment that happened in the mind. There was a spiritual, a spiritual uh, enfoldment that happened in the mind. And what happens is uh, there are periods uh, when the idea that we have meditated on, that we have accepted as our truth, uh, spring forth into our consciousness. Yeah, the word that you have, the word that what you receive, uh, when you take it, you eat it, you digest it, uh, but it becomes a spiritual, it becomes a point of time uh, that one day uh, that all that you haven't taken, all that you have heard, uh, all that you have grabbed as your truth, it leaps forth uh, and becomes an idea and take over your mind. It becomes an evasion uh, and it become, become a living reality uh, in your life instead of just a concept. Oftentimes when we hear stuff, it's just be concept and it just be information. But when this day came, everything that Jesus had did over those 33 years, this is what this Pentecost is really about. He showed them and he walked the earth for 33 years healing and doing stuff coming from this house here in Jairus' daughter in the house. And you got four people that, that needed healing, that needed something for Jesus. And this man laying on this structure, they told the roof off the place just to get him down there. And all all the things that, that, that Jesus did, the disciples was right there. But Jesus said, it comes a point that I got to go. And if you ain't learned what I told you or what I showed you, you just SOS. But it comes a point when this day comes and this day of enfoldment comes, that is not just a concept to you, but I grasp it and it becomes me and I become it. So I am the walking word. I am the truth that you're going to see. Uh, so this in this is awakening we get fruits of ideas that have been planted in our mind when the word comes from it's planted in our mind huh? but once it's planted in our mind it has to be watered huh? and when it's watered then we get fruit from it it is the and we have uh, escaped from from this darkness from Egypt and enter into this light which is the promised land uh, to the one who awakened spiritually and reality it's significant it's significance uh, and it means the degree of the mind of the action is bringing the consciousness in the present of spirit yeah. it's bringing bringing the mind in the present of spirit as a substance and so and so and so and so and suddenly they became a sound somebody say suddenly there was a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where there was sitting so suddenly it means at a drop of a dime you know how they say that the son of man no man knows the day or the hour that the son of man is going to appear but we just know and we are in the anticipation that is going to happen can I tell you that the son of man is not going to crack this physical sky but he's going to crack the sky on the inside of you because you could be dead and long gone and this world gonna be taken on because it's not physically for a scry to be cracking it's, it's I'm trying to come through you I'm trying to when it's on the inside of you I'm trying to crack the crack the sky crack the sky so I can come through you so there became a sound from heaven Heaven, heaven on the inside of us, uh, the Christ consciousness, uh, the realm of divine mind, the realm of the, realm of divine ideas uh, was a rushing mighty wind. Uh, wind here, uh, wind here uh, is the executive power of the mind uh, to clear a way uh, for the highest state of consciousness to come forth. It's all right, I know. I know, I know. You thought I was finna say he finna kite the sky and he, and he finna drop some out the sky. No, 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 no. You are the sky that he's trying to crack. You are the sky that he's finna drop something through. You are the conduit that he's gonna use in this three dimensional plane. Can I tell you a secret? God is not coming back here to do nothing. You are his son. And he say you the great the works that I've done, you're gonna do great. And it's through you as you and with you, that I'm going to send my spirit and I'm going to operate through you ask me. Yeah. 
So the wind, the wind, the wind is the power of the mind. Oh, a Russian mind, a wind came. And when that wind came, it's like when a tornado come and it started clearing its own path to go. That's how that wind is. That wind comes and it clears the way for your consciousness to be lifted higher. So when we have power, power is a quickening. It's a quickening. This type of power is a quickening from from high that must must perceive and comes in and come in an agreement in a realization of the dominant that you have on the inside of you. With the dominant, see the power and the authority and the kingdom that's on the inside of you. Scripture says, "Man, this kingdom. You can't see this kingdom. You can't. It's not here. It's not there. But the kingdom that is." Soon to come. It's what's on the inside of you. That's one of my shirts. It's on the inside of you. And I'm trying to bring that through. But on this day, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me back up. And so when you have a spiritual quickening, people think that all oh, that. Oh, they got power. No, 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 no. It just feels good. If you see me do that, because it, it hit me. You better ask Pruitt. It just hit me. Woo! It felt good to me. That just, that's me. But a quickening, a spiritual quickening is when the whole man wakes up. You become alive. You ain't no zombie no more. You ain't dead man walking no more. Like the walking dead. You ain't dead man walking no more. You walking with everybody else. Doing what everybody else do. Saying what everybody else say. And that's, that's why we're the church that's on the edge. Because we ain't dead man walking. And we ain't doing it like everybody else. And we ain't saying it like everybody else. But it becomes a time when you on that road to Damascus. That a light is going to shine. And it's going to knock you off your feet. And it's going to awaken something in you. And when you once was walking like this. You're now running. And you're on a mission. And you are her. There's a purpose I gotta get to. Her. There's a plan that I gotta get to. <laughs> Spiritual awakening is when you wake up the, the whole man to a full consciousness so that he can see what God sees. That's what I'm trying to get to. I know what God has said about me, I know what has been prophesied, but I'm trying to get to the point that I see what He says. That is not just a concept. It's not just a word. But I put it into action. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. The house that this thing filled was the mind of man. Yeah. So the sound here. Let me give you give you a little insight, little revelation. The sound, the sound that shows here is that the noise was not caused by the wind. Read the text. Read the text. Read the text. Read the text. The sound shows that the noise was not caused by the wind, but by a mighty blowing which resembles the rushing air. So the noise of the wind was a design, was a sign of the divine presence that God was in the building. It, 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 it was showing and symbolizing that God was there. That God was in the midst. You had, you had the, the 12 disciples and the other people, about 120 people that was up in this room. And they, if I can bust your bubble, they weren't legit in a room. Mm, they weren't in a room. They were sitting in a place in their mind waiting. They was waiting in their mind just like some of us, I know what God said. I, I, I know what he promised. And they always on anticipation that before he left, he said, you stay in Jerusalem. Then it took be told, these people never went anywhere. They were just in one place. They never went anywhere. They were just in one place, awaiting. Just like us sitting here, we are waiting and anticipating to see what she's about to say next. <laughs> they was waiting. And so the noise and the wind was a sound of divine presence, of the divine presence that God was there. And there appealed upon them cloven tongues as fire and it set upon them. The word cloven here means they divided and separated. <laughs> divine is separated. 
it was divided and it was separated. What they receive, they receive the same thing, but they received it individually. Because my mission, my purpose, is not, might not be your mission and your purpose. My gifts and callings may not be your gifts and callings, but on this day, on the, the fulfillment of when this, 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 this spiritual consciousness come forth, it's a day that I pour out my spirit upon all. And it quickens. And it brings about power. And it awakens something that will sleep on the inside of you. And so here it said clothing, tongue. So it means, um, yeah, I'm not going to touch it. I don't care. So when you have the word tongue here, it symbolizes in the increased ability to express truth clearly and freely. I know. And I'm telling you, I, I look for God and I said, God, I, I need you to give me a sign. Just like I tell y'all all the time, I need a sign that this is what I should preach. And my Godfather, he posted some on Facebook and, and I, I quickened. I said, whoa, that awakened something in me. And then when we was on family vacation, my brother-in-law walked in in the cabin and he said, I'm shabba, ba, 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 ba. I say, speak, son, speak. Because it gave me the clear indication I was on schedule and I was on time. So when you have tongues, it increases the ability to express truth. Yes, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that speaking in tongues is not, it's not, you know, not irrelevant. It's not what we need. No, we need that language of the spirit. We, yeah, we embrace tongues. If you catch me, I'll pray in tongues at my house. And every now and then when we're in prayer, I'll get caught up and I'll release a tongue. But if I release it, I can tell you what I'm saying. I'm not just rattling it off at the mouth. But hear this tongue is for you to express truth clearly. When you want to talk about the tongues, Apostle Paul, he expressed and he delivers and it breaks down what tongues is. But here, we're trying to express truth clearly. In the Greek, it means a language. God say, I'm trying to ignite a fire and I want to change your language. So with fire, fire comes to burn. It comes to subdue. It comes to purify. It comes to penetrate. Fire comes to eliminate. It comes to energize. Fire is power. The heart has received the baptisms from Ohio and was set on fire with the passion for things of truth and the passion for things of right. <laughs> and you see here in Acts 1, it says, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so here, here he said, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift to fall upon you, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized me in water, Jesus. But in a few days, I'm about to say in a few days, a few days and after a while, you're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So let me break this down and I'm finna get up out of here. Water baptism indicates a letting go of, of attitude, of thought, a denial. It's symbolic of you letting your old man die so your new man can be risen. A spiritual baptism is you taking on and you affirming that all growth, growth takes, takes place on both of them. But you are letting go and you are holding on you are denying and you are affirming so first we have to let go of old concepts let go of old ways of thinking let go of how things used to be so we can embrace this new concept the way things are is the way things is and grasp a new concept but we cannot grasp a new concept until we let go of the old prophetess Fleming said that and with me with motivation meet with motivation you got to let go. You can't be holding on to what is, but looking back to what was. You got to make a choice. You can't be hot. You can't be cold. You can't be lukewarm. You got to make a decision this day or what you're going to do. You're going to let go or you're going to hold on. I'm 
Father. And they was filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues of the Spirit, gave them utterance. So in this case, to be filled with the Holy Ghost means to be empowered for service. It means that you empowered for a mission. You empowered for something that's greater than you. And every all of us have something greater than us on the inside of us. But we have to have that fire, that, that, that zeal to cause us to go forth. So every faculty of our mind is quickened when there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the power of the word, is it, 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 um, it stimulates our language. It stimulates our tongue and understanding. One word are charged with spiritual powers. And even the intellect, everything receives it and it understands the message. I'm trying to get to the point of the concepts that I have and what God has put on the inside of me. I'm trying to get to the point that I grasp it and that I understand it and that my language and my tongue, it lines up with the spirit that's on the inside of me. That's why your language needs to be changed because if you were speaking something before you were saved, before you was endowed with the Holy Ghost, I can't have you speaking that same language but operating under the spirit. Your language has to change. How you seek stuff has to change. Your tongue has to change because life and death is in the power of your tongue. And if I give you what's been waiting for you with your tongue, you will kill it. With your tongue, it will never come to pass. So I got to change you before I give you it. So, so, so. Tongue. Greek, glossia, which means language. The gift of tongue is ability to express truth fairly. You have the tongue to express truth. The ultimate result of the outpouring of the spirit is that the disciples, the faculty of the mind, receive a new power to express truth. Speaking with other tongues, speaking with other language, and go forth and proclaim the salvation, the restitution of man back to his spiritual birthright. That's why I'm trying to, when I get saved, it takes me in a whole about phase. And the, the route and the play and the path that I was taking, I turn around and I start returning in my mind, not physically, in my mind, I return back to my birthright. I return back to what God has initially said about me, not what, not what, 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 what my poverty said, not what big mama said and big daddy, and not what mom and daddy said, not what society has told you, not what the music videos is telling you, not what that rape and molestation has told you, but I'm returning back to the initial word that God has said about me, because if I can get back to there, y'all think you hate me now, I'll be a dangerous being here in this earth. Yeah, you think you dislike me now, and you want to call me cocky now, but if I can return back to my birthright and return back to what God has said about me, I would be unstoppable. Yeah, I'm going to release this and I'm going to get up out of here. It was, a, it was thought that people that speak in the tongues experience on the day of Pentecost as if they were drunk. Hey man, those folks done lost it, boy. They in the drunk high and laid high. What is going on? What in the what? What? Those folks tore up in there. And it was so, it was so funny because Paul, Paul was a trip. If you ever read a study, Paul was a trip. Paul, Paul came for you. Let me tell y'all something. It's too early today for these folks to be drunk. <laughs> don't, don't start this, man. That's not what's going on. He stepped forward because he was like, in his mind, it registers. He said, no, 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 no. This is what Jesus told us to wait for. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is what he said was going to come. No, no, no. They ain't drunk. We been waiting on this moment. Yeah. They ain't too up. They ain't too up. Because their behaviors and how they was acting wasn't normal. Can I tell you, when you get in dive with the Holy Ghost, people won't even recognize you. They'll say everything, something wrong with you. What, what you talking? You must be over there in a cult. What, you, what kind of language you talking? No, 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 no. What no happen is I done been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I done came through myself. And what no happen is the language that you knew me by, I, done, I got to receive a new language, and I got a new talk, and I got a way that I go by and do it. With me, huh? I ain't drunk. Huh? My behavior changed because I don't change. Huh? Once you change your mind, huh? everything about you change. Huh? And it started lining up with the truth. Huh? It started lining up with God has said about you. Huh? If I had 
Said, we ain't drunk. We start church at 10. We ain't drunk. I'm still on the high from last Sunday. I've been walking. I've been walking around all week. Woo! <laughs> Pastor called me. <laughs> I say, hey, I said, hello. She said, girl, you're still in the bed. I say, I'm drunk, Ma. I'm still drunk. I'm still, still drunk. Damn it. Prophetess Fleming came. I said, oh, I'm still drunk. I'm still drunk. And I said, God, let me hold this to Sunday. Let me hold it to Sunday. Even on family vacation, I kept saying, Lord, let me hold this. Let me, it's Friday. I ain't got but a couple more days. Let me hold this drunkness. Because what has changed is once I come into realization who I am and I align myself with the word of God, you're always drunk. You're always not so mad. You're going to hold another rail and say, God, keep me. God, keep me until I return. I want to be the fast starter. I want to be in the church. God tells me. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. When people are under influence, they become bolder and more aggressive. When you know that you know, okay. So when one truly learns the language of the spirit, he may attain more balance and control and expression of his thoughts and feelings. That's all we need. The Holy Spirit. Because the places that I used to react, stuff I used to do, don't even phase me no more. Because a new era done came. And I'm on a, a, a new, a new, a new anointing. What was once influenced and inspired me, I have it fully yeah. now. I don't update it. My sister don't update it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, 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 he, when, when, you, when you become, I'm finna get out of here. I promise, uh, Frank, I'm finna go. He will maintain more balance, control, and expression of his thoughts and feelings. And he will express the stability in his personality, regardless of outer circumstances. When you don't update it on the inside, the wind can blow. People can act a fool. People can leave. People can come. People can go. Anxiety can kick in. All kind of stuff. Everything will just knock your day out. But if I got an inner peace, what's going on on the inside of me? Outside cannot take. Outside, they can be you. The wind may blow, it might blow, but I'm still gonna be standing. I'm gonna be like that tree in Psalms one. In Psalms one, and I'm planted by the rivers of waters, and I bring forth fruit in due season. My wheat shall not wither, and whatever I do shall prosper. And when the wind blow, I might lead a little bit like Michael Jackson, but I ain't gonna break. I might lead. So he will be able to control his reactions and response. Oh, I'm on good time. It's just level 38. Oh, yeah. So he will be able to control his reactions and response to niggas, personalities, and situations. There will be neither an overdoing nor a withholding for positive, constructive, of, of defined action is required. What, what is the language of the spirit? It's the language of the spirit is ideas. Ideas of the mind. Okay, let me get out of here. So I'm finna go back to my introduction and I'm finna go home. So, sound familiar, didn't approve. Yeah, I felt my daddy then. So when there is an anticipation, when there is anticipation, there is an excitement. Yeah, yeah, you can stand up for this one because we finna go. When there is an anticipation, there is an excitement. Um, and you waiting eagerly for someone you know. Something is going to happen. I'm finna close with this story. So there was a story of this little boy. This little boy was bad. He was horrible. Oh, yeah, he was bad. Right up, ISS, all of the above. Kicked off the bus, all of the above. The teacher called his parents and said, hey, look at here. We need to have a meeting because I cannot tame this child. They go in and they have a meeting and they sit down talking to the little boy. And the little boy said, well, daddy, they messing with me. He said, no, 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 no. You can't let outside influences and mess up what you learned at home. What's what we done taught you. And he said, well, daddy, I'm sorry. He said, no, 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 no. You 
you're you going to get in trouble. Boy goes home. Huh? He does good for a little while. Go back to school and just horrible. Huh? Just terrible. Huh? Call the teacher. Say, look, you got to do something. Or I'm finna kick him out of the classroom. Huh? The parents go. Huh? They have a meeting with the teacher. Huh? And he said, you know what? Huh? This is what I'm going to do. Huh? If you will do what is asked of you huh? and do what is required of you, huh? I'm going to give you a bicycle. Huh? I'm going to give you something. Huh? And he said, for real, daddy? Huh? And his anticipation level huh? went to the roof. Oh, yeah, I'm finna preach. Huh? And it went to the roof. Huh? And he said, okay, daddy, huh? I do exactly what you and mama says huh? because I am anticipating on what you promised me. Huh? Uh, yeah, I'm going to preach today. Huh? Hold on. Huh? And so he says, uh, he gets home, huh? and his daddy said, this is what I need you to do. Huh? I need you I need you to take out the trash. Huh? I need you to do your schoolwork. Hold on, Frank. Huh? I need you to take out the trash. Huh? Hold on. And I need you to do your schoolwork. Huh? And I need you to follow everything that teacher says huh? and that teacher does. Huh? And if you do, huh? I'm going to give you this bicycle. Huh? So the child went to school, huh? and he was quiet as a mouse. Huh? He didn't get rolled up. Huh? The teacher didn't have to holler at him, huh? and he said, out of his seat and he did his work. He came home every day just excited and happy and he was quit walking coming down the school walk and the mama said well what did you tell him? He said let's wait. I don't want to spill it. I don't want to speak before time. He said we're just going to see what he going to do. So he came home. He took the trash out. He came home. They didn't have to tell him to wash the dishes. They didn't have to tell him to clean up his room or nothing. And so he was good. Time went by. Time went by. And he kept looking. He said well daddy you promised me something. And I've been good. And he said I didn't tell you when. I just told you I promised you something. And so the boy goes on and he says he got in the classroom and he was ready to cut up because he said I know my daddy promised me something but I ain't seen this yet but he said you know what no 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 I'm going to wait this thing out because if my daddy said you better believe he's going to come through and so he sat there in the classroom and his buddy started cutting up he said you know I'm not going to jump into that because my daddy promised me a bicycle so I need to do what I got to do so I can get what he promised and so he got home and he was excited he went on home day after day huh, looking huh, and in excitement huh, and he got discouraged huh, because he didn't see huh, what his dad had promised him huh, but he said I'm going to wait huh, and I'm going to hold this thing out because huh, my dad had promised me huh, that he was going to come through huh, and so he went on huh, and it was coming up to Christmas time huh, and he was so excited huh, because he got stuff for Christmas huh, but then huh, he got what he promised huh, and his daddy said what I was telling you huh, I needed you to wait huh, because I wanted to see what you was going to do huh, and how long you was gonna do it for her? I want to see how long you was gonna wait her, to get for you what I what I promised you. Her. And so when the boy received it, her, he was so excited her, and he was so eager. Her, and he said, her, "I want you to understand her, that when you wait her, and you do what you're supposed to do, her, and you give the instructions that is given to you, her, you receive what is promised to you." Portia, what are you saying? Come on, Frank, let's go home. Her. And so when you, her, God has promised some of you her, some things, her, and He's telling you, "I need you to wait." because there's a system update that is taking place on the inside of you and I need you to wait to this update because when this next version of you that's going to come through you're going to receive something that's going to change your life you're going to receive something that you've been anticipating on you've been eagerly sitting there waiting and the Bible says that when the disciples they was waiting on what Jesus said Jesus told them I need you to wait until Jerusalem and when you wait until Jerusalem and you wait and you be patient you're going to receive what the Father has for you but what I understand is when you are waiting waiting doesn't mean to sit on do nothing but when you are waiting you praise it while you're waiting and when you are waiting you worship it while you're waiting and when you are waiting you are before the face of the Lord and my wait don't mean nothing my wait means I got to do something because when you are anticipating her huh, of God to give you what he said he's going to give you. Huh? You sit there with eager expectation. Huh? You can't even stay still huh? because I am anticipating her huh? or what God say who has for me. Huh? And sooner or later huh, God say I'm going to create this guy huh? and that trumpet is going to sound huh? and that dead in Christ huh, is going to rise first. Huh? And all of us that remain huh, we're going to be a part of be caught up to meet him in the air and then when I look at him I look at myself scripture says when you see me you have seen the father I'm a spirit image of my daddy and so I am anticipating on what God has for me and I'm gonna wait until I see it come to pass I'm gonna wait even if I want to go backwards I'm gonna wait because sooner 
going to turn in my favor and it's going to turn around just for me. I wish I had about three people that says why I am waiting or what God has said for me. Why I am in waiting. I'm going to praise him while I wait. I'm going to worship him while I wait. I'm going to meditate while I wait. Because sooner or later, he's going to come through. Sooner or later, everything that's been prophesied to me is going to come up and out on me. Sooner or later, I ain't going to be Peter Parker no more. I'm going to turn it into Spider-Man. Sooner or later, you're going to see me swinging from building to building. Sooner or later, you're going to see me out there reaching the sick. Sooner or later, you're going to see me out there healing the people who are sick. Sooner or later. But there is an anticipation. You are excited. You eager. You on edge. That little boy, he anticipated what his daddy said. And even when he wanted to go back and cut her, he couldn't. He wouldn't. It's not that he couldn't. He chose not to. He had to make a choice. Do I go back and act up? Do I go back to what's familiar to me? Or I just wait on my daddy? Do I go back and give the teacher a hard time or do I wait on my daddy? Do I go back to what's familiar to me? Go back to those ideas that didn't serve me no purpose, that did more harm than they did good? Or do I wait? Huh? Do I go back to them people that I was falling out with? Those people that didn't even serve me no purpose? Do I go back to that? Do I go back to my occupation or I'll wait? Because the disciples, they had occupations. But God said, what I'm going to do, come follow me. Come follow me. Follow me. Because of what you do, you're going to do it, but you're going to do it in another way. How you reach people, you'll still reach them, but you'll reach them for me. So disciples, they waited in Jerusalem. And they said, I'm going to wait. But if you go back and look in the text, while they was waiting, they was praising. While they was waiting, they was worshiping. While they were waiting, they was on their face before God. And it was like, I don't know when he going to do what he said he was going to do. But I trust him and I believe him. And he's not a man that he's not, not going to lie. And I'm going to take him at his word. So if that's you, you say, you know what? I'm going to wait. They waited for their Holy Ghost to change their mindset. They didn't have a, a, a touch of it. or It wasn't around or inspired. This time, they was in doubt with it. It was fully, it had fully come. So what are you going to do while you wait? Entertain old thoughts? Entertain old ways? Or say, you know what? It's a process, and I'm not going to quit here, I'm not going to fold here, and I'm not going to give up. Here, I'm going to go through the process so I can be calm. So today I encourage you, I encourage you to be in anticipation of what God is going to do. And I said this, no man knows the day or the hour that the Son of Man shall appear. Think about that. People use that and say he's going to create this guy. It's going to be all over. People want this world to be over so bad. I know, I know. I'm going to leave it alone more. So they can be right. People want it to be all over. Because that thing, well, they're going to hell. They're doing this and they're doing that and they're doing this. No, 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 no. You mad because you can't have control over what these folks doing. And as a flock, as a shepherd... You're not put in charge of people. When you have a commission, I learned this from a pastor, you have a commission, you preach, you preach to them. You don't follow them home. You preach to them change. You give them the tools to change their own mindset. They gonna have to be the one to say, I'm gonna pick up this tool, I'm gonna pick up this wrench, and I'm gonna get this screw unloose so I can let this damn burst in my mind and let all this seek out so I can fill it up with the spirit of the Lord. But we're anticipating on something to end, and it's you that's going in. Your old ways, your old thoughts, 
your old concepts. And God say, I, when I come through, it's going to be your true self, who you really are. You've been prophesying. You this. You evangelist. You this. You this. You this. Woo. And it's like, I ain't seen it yet. Question, but what are you doing to see it? What are the necessary steps that you're taking to see what has been said? God said, I'm going to do it, but how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to see it? Are you anticipating of it? Are you in anticipation? Boy, you on edge. Well, when, when I was younger and we had Christmas, mama put that tree up, but I'd be shaking, but leg be shaking. Christmas coming. When she started putting up gifts out, she's sitting there looking at her. Boy, if I can just open one and turn it over so she don't even see our opening. I ain't going to do that. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. But I had an anticipation. Couldn't even sleep Christmas, Christmas Eve. Shaking in the bed, tossing and turning. Santa Claus going to come. He going to come. He going to come. And then you just go to sleep. Fall asleep. Don't even know if he came or not. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to hold my eyes open. He coming. I'm trying to see him. I'm trying to see. And you fall asleep and everything, you know, the sun up. You about to break your ankle to get in there to that tree. Try to tow it down. Not lights over bulbs and everything. But that's how you got to be about your promise. That's how you got to be about the word that's been spoken over your life by God. I will tear you down just to get what he said. So God bless you and God keep you is my prayer.